Hello and a very warm welcome back to Fox's Weight Watcher Kitchen. I'm Johnny Fox. Now, today's recipe is going to be a bit of a follow-on of the last video we did. Remember we showed you how to make the mixture for the lentil flatbread? Going to be using the same again today, but we're going to show you various ways that you can adapt this recipe. So in case you didn't watch the first video, we're using red lentils, one cup. Water, we're using two cups. That's the volume you're going to use. So it's two parts water, one part lentil. For this one, I've left it to soak overnight, which I do with all my lentil recipes when I'm making these mixtures up. But because we're going to turn this one into a pancake mix, lentils within themselves have got that earthy kind of taste. So we want to really get rid of that earthy taste. So how do we do it? You can try things like your vanilla essence, put your spoonful of that in there as well, or you can do what I do. I get a lot of juices. It's a company called the Skinny Food Company, and the one I'm doing today is gonna to be the chocolate orange. As you can see, there's quite a large range here. They go things like toffee apple, your butterscotch ones, you got your honey ones, maple syrup, you can see is almost done as well. We've got the salted caramel, and we've even got white chocolate, which I haven't tried in the pancake, but today is gonna to be the chocolate orange. I'll leave a link underneath so if you want to click on the skinny food company have a look at some of the products you can try those as well so what we need to do we've got a lot more water than what we need at the moment if we're going to add some juice to it so all we're going to do is just tip a little bit of this water away because we don't need it to be too wet keep that to one side and then we're going to replace that juice or the water with some skinny food juice as you can see a good portion of that in there and we're going to do exactly the same as what we did when we were making our lentil flatbreads put it into the blender get the lid on the top and blitz okay so that's all the blitzing done all the noise is done thanks for the speeding up and technology take away the lid always remove the blade and then we get ourselves prepared ready for some cooking so back out with a little handy dandy stove one ladle full is all you're going to need i'm going to be using get my tissue ready as well a little bit of olive oil spray i just tend to spray the bottom of the pan we don't want it too much oil in there because if you're with weight watchers and you're with one of these weight loss programs what you don't want to do is be putting too much in so all i'm doing is basically sealing the pan with a little bit of oil not too much and then i'm going to take just shy of a ladle full of this liquid pop that into the pan oh the smell of that already is so nice because you remember them orange cho or ch chocolate orange balls that you used to get you know the round ones you tap it unwrap it and either this taste is pretty much the same as that so we're just going to sear this into the pan Roll it round so you get almost the right pancake shape. Heat wise, I've got this on roughly a medium heat and it takes approximately two to two and a half minutes to get the first side done. Remember on the last video when I showed you, you can go wrong with these and try to turn them too early because it's a very wet mixture. It's not your typical flour, eggs and water. So you're not making a standard pancake mix. It does take slightly longer to make the water evaporate. Always look for this to start bubbling up on the top. When it starts raising, you know you're almost there. Don't be impatient and be tempted to turn it over too quick because that is where it's going to go wrong. It will fall to pieces if you do that. You have to wait, be very patient. You can see already, you've got these bubbles starting to appear on the top. That is the first stage you're waiting for, but all you've got to do is be patient and wait a couple of minutes and we'll come straight back and I'll show you how we flip these over. Back in a sec. So it's been on the stove now for about a minute and a half. You can see it's just starting to raise up in the middle. You're getting a few of these holes appearing. So we know we're getting there. Just gonna test it with my, it's like a rubbery spoon. Rather, because it's a non-stick pan, we don't want things to stick to it. I'm just gonna test the edges first to see if it can be moved. As you can see, that is almost there. So once we've got this all the way around, you just keep moving it until it slides. This is the easy part now. Now we know it's sliding. If you're a bit like me and you want to do the, the flick over, I always give it a shake round to make sure it's completely free of the pan. Flick it over and there's your pancake. If you're not one of these pancake flippers, I'll show you once this is done this side, I'll show you an even easier way because not everyone can get hold of the pan, swish it around and flick it over. So be patient a few more seconds, wait for this side to sear. It's gonna take about 30 seconds for it to get into the other side. You can push it down into the bottom, start moving it around a little bit to make sure it's almost colored. 
and as you can see it moves very freely now just with a spatula so if you're not one of those that can do the flicking of things over the top all you've got to do once you know it's loose from the bottom get your spatula underneath lift it away turn the pan over and flick it over that way and then put it back onto the heat so we'll let this carry on searing for a while i'll get my plate ready as well because we are going to taste this one straight away. And remember, there's going to be quite a few recipes just with this mixture coming up in a while. So I'm just going to show you this one first. This is looking good. Let's have another look at the other side. It's almost there. Going to give this about another 15, 20 seconds. Then we'll start and put another mix in there. So let's just push that down a bit. You can flatten them down. Once, it, once you know it's seared, it's all nice and tight. Then you know it's almost ready to go. So I'm going to pour that one onto the plate because that's the one we're going to eat that but before we do that I want to get another one on the go so a bit more of my olive oil spray and again we don't want it too thick just enough to sear the pan wipe the residue away and then while this one's cooking up we'll get and show you how tasty this pancake is going to be so that just turn it round so you're getting almost the right round shape and while that one's cooking up, and I'll be honest, I do this a lot for guys for breakfast. This is probably one of my favorite all time breakfasts because if you're on a weight loss program, it's zero smart points, especially if you're Weight Watchers. If you're a slimming world, there's no fat in there whatsoever. It's just lentils and water and a bit of this skinny food syrup. Because I'm using this chocolate orange flavor one, all I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how tasty these are because I absolutely adore these. Probably four or five times a week, I'll have these. You can put as much syrup on the top as you like. And with these, so yummy. Just pour that around all over the top. And even though it's still nice and hot, because I'm a great believer of eating and going, just gonna give this a taste now and see how. Mmm. These are just so yummy. I could eat these every single day. And again, because there's, there's next to no calories in this. It's just lentils, water, and a little bit of skinny food stuff. Like I say, the link's in there below if you want to have a look at their goodies as well. But this, I'll carry on eating these, carry on with these, and we come back and do another recipe shortly. So see you in a while. Mm. Okay, so the pancake one is done. We've had a bit of a clean up. Here's recipe number two. All we're going to need is the same mixture. So you've got your lentils and water, two garlic cloves. Throw the lid back on again. Out with the blitzer. All the blitzing done on that one as well. Lid off of that one. This is the one I like as well because when you get the, just the fragrance of this one is really nice. Again, take the blade out and give it a clean. Get the same tools ready. As you can see, not really much. Oh, and a little bit of salt in this one as well. A little splash of salt, which I should have. If I just give that a wiggle, where's my spoon gone? Over there, give this one a little, without the salt for some reason, this one doesn't quite taste the same. So I'll give this one a bit of a bit of a wipe down before I do anything else. Move that to one side and get the little hot plate back out again. So same as we did before, take the spray, a few sprays on the bottom. You can see that the plate's a little bit too warm this time, just to sear the bottom of that. So if you want your garlic bread, Exactly the same as what we've done before. One ladle full is all we're gonna need, or if you want it thinner, you can have it even thinner. It looks exactly the same, but the taste is so much different. Move that to one side. Again, we just stir these around in the pan, just so they get almost like the same round pancake type of shape. Leave them on the stove. Oh, this smell, this is the one I like. If you want, if you want a side bread, garlic bread, you can put it with your spaghetti bolognese, your curries, or whatever dishes that you're doing and you want your garlic bread with it. This is a really good substitute for it. Get, instead of getting the chews with the garlic butter inside, which is absolutely loaded with weight content, it puts it all on the belly. If you're a woman, it all goes on the hip and the backside. We know what we're talking about with the weight loss program. With this one, the, the fragrance of this is so nice and the taste of it is really adorable to use as a little side dish to go with the main course dishes. So again, we'll just watch this one, leave it on the stove for about two minutes, exactly the same as we've done with the lentil flour 
flatbreads. Same as we're doing with the pancakes, exactly the same process. Let's just wait for this one to come. We flick this one over, show you this one, and then we move on to the next recipe, which is gonna be even more interesting as well. So again, back in a second. Okay, so that's been on the stove for a good couple of minutes now. We're just gonna test this one. Same as usual, just work your way around the edges of this. If it breaks up too much, then you know it's not quite ready. As you can see, catching the pan a bit, best to just walk away and leave it for a few seconds, otherwise when you try to move it, it will actually break. So let's come back again in a few seconds and see how this is gonna look. Let's get the, the, the spatula nice and clean. Move that to one side. And we just keep playing with a few of these edges just to see because one thing you remember on the on the lentil flatbread one that I did, the, the video predating this one, we actually broke one of these up. Again, I think it's because we're in video mode, we're waiting, the time seems to go a lot quicker when you're videoing things. They usually take about two to two and a half minutes for the first side, and the easy way to describe it, they do raise up, you do get a few dots appearing in them as well, but I would say when the top looks like it's almost dry on the top, then you know you can start playing with it, and that did have a little bit of a shine on it. As you can see, it's starting to come away now, getting nice and loose. It's still breaking up a little bit on the edges, so not a very good descriptive one on this one, but there you go, it's just starting to move, but I think it's still a little bit underdone. So we're gonna leave that there for a few more seconds. And again, if you're not one of these people that can do the turning around and flick it over, you know the trick already. I've shown you this before with a spatula. Take the spatula, move it all out, out to one side, flick it over, move that away from the hot plate, and then tuck him back on. It's that simple. Let's have a bit of a clean up while we're there. Just went to get my little cloth over by the sink. And then we can see how this one's gonna come out. The, the, the smell of this one, because it's garlic bread. You, again, if you want it stronger, put more garlic in it. It depends on how strong you like your garlic bread. But remember, when you're talking about trying to lose weight, it's trying to find that substitute, but you want it to taste lovely at the same time. You don't want something that's gonna be, oh, I can lose weight on it, but it doesn't really taste that nice. You want it to taste good. So this one, I mean, just the fragrance of this, the, the garlic fragrance, and that's just two cloves. I have actually put four and five in there when I'm making slightly bigger batches, and the taste of this is nice. If I've got rock salt, which I've recently run out of, I'll put a bit of rock salt in there as well instead of the standard salt but this one I've got standard salt and this is going to be really nice I think that is almost done it smells like it's almost there that is just about getting ready to move let's have a look at this one it's shaking around give it a flick over um, not quite there this is where again you've got to know you're cooking as well it doesn't quite look like it's seared enough on the other side. We'll give this about another 10 or 15 seconds. But again, it's all about trying to find recipes that you can lose weight with. And this one is, it accompanies, like I say, those other dishes, your spaghetti bolognese, a lot of people have your French stick, garlic bread on the side, those great big fat chews, full of, loaded with butter on the inside. And as you know, flour to make your bread, every, basically every 100 grams, you're talking about 10 points of weight if you're with Weight Watchers. The same with Slimming World, you don't want the fat content going in there as well. But this is just about ready. Gonna move that to one side. Gonna have a little taste of that, if I can get my fork. Because this, I would say if you're gonna have these, you've got to have this warm. And again, the good thing about these, you can actually freeze all of these down. So if you want to spend it, you know, a Sunday afternoon, you've got nothing else to do, you know, whip up some lentils, throw them into the pan, freeze them down afterwards. The way I do mine, I layer them down. I put it in cling film, put another sheet of cling film over the top, and then put the next one on, another layer of cling film, and just stack them up. I've probably got about a stack nearly a foot deep of these pancake ones that I do, because I have them quite a lot. Wait, the next morning, just take them out, put them in the microwave. It takes about a minute or a minute and a quarter just to cook those up and then you're ready and you're on the go. So you don't have to get on the stove every single day. So you can make batches and freeze them down. But this, oh, that, oh, that is really nice, strong garlic flavored bread. And again, if you want it drier, I say you can't, you can't really overcook this as garlic bread. The taste of it is so not, mm. It's just so delicious. 
That is just like your absolute perfect garlic bread. I'm going to have a clean up again. I'm going to get the next mixture started and I'm going to show you again how to turn this recipe again into something totally different. So back again in a second. Okay, so we're back. We've now done two recipes. We've had our pancake mix. We've done our garlic bread. What I'm doing, I'm cheating a little bit on this third recipe because I'm using some of the, the garlic mixture because what I like to do I'm going to make a naan bread next you know when you have your curries you have your naan bread on the side again it's all doughy it's nice light and fluffy and then they do sometimes garlic naans if you don't like garlic naan then don't use the garlic mixture just use lentil water and then on the inside I add I've got my own mixed spice blend so if you haven't seen that click on the link there that'll show you how to make this mixed spice blend I've had one teaspoonful i've just gone straight in with that one and then also in naan breads have you ever seen those little black dots that you can never figure out what they are they're called nigella seeds all i do is get a packet of those again one or two teaspoons full of those depending on how many of those that you like and you can see just in the mixture there i don't know if you can see from that angle the mixture you see all those lovely little nigella seeds so again we're just going to get the hot plate out get the pan seared up with a little bit of olive oil again Again, still nice and hot. Give it a bit of a wipe down to get all the oil away, but sear the sides. And again, it's the, exactly the same process. All we do again is one ladle full of this. Give that a nice, oh, this smells delicious. Me being a curry lover, this one for me is one that I love this. And I, I'll be honest, I make batches and batches of this one when I'm doing it. I freeze these down because this is one of the naan breads that I love to make. Again, it's just a pancake size. Just rotate it round until you get to that almost perfect round shape. And again, you've just got to leave this on the stove, walk away if necessary, put your stopwatch on if you've got a stopwatch, leave it on for about two to two and a half minutes, or you can stand there, wait for it to raise up, wait for it to nearly dry on the top. But that's the important thing. Walk away and leave it to do its cooking before you start playing. So back in a second, we'll show you how this one comes out in a second. Okay, so now that's got nice and dry on the top, just going to give this one a test. Just the fragrance of this one, because you've got the, the mixed spice curry blend in there as well, and those lovely little nigella seeds, the smell of this, it smells just like a naan bread. It is so delightful. And again, all these recipes, they're done exactly the same way. It's just lentils and water, and then you add in other ingredients to turn it into something totally different. As you can see, that's just about there. Let's just give that one a shake and see if it will. Not quite there. And as you can see, sometimes that happens as well. If you flick it over too early, it's a little bit too wet there. So we'll dispose of this one, come back and we'll start another. This is what I mean about leaving it long enough. It caught the pan, as you can see, right at the bottom. Doesn't matter, we throw this one away, we get another one on the stove and we'll show you. So back again in a second, so a big whoops. Okay, so we've got the next one back in place of the destroyed one. We're almost at the same stage again. I put it on a stopwatch this time. It is actually taking me two minutes and 20 seconds on a medium heat. I find as well, if you put them on a high heat when you cook these, they do tend to scorch a bit too far underneath. So it is a, a, a slower process, but what you're trying to do is basically evaporate all that moisture away from the lentils. If you do it too quick, like as you saw on the last one, you'll destroy it. If you try and pick it up with a spatula because you can't flick it over in a pan, it'll just flop off the side of the spatula. And again, you've wasted another one. So let's try not to waste this one. Two minutes and we're on 50 seconds. So nearly three minutes for this one. That is almost coming away from the bottom of the pan now. Just a little bit caught in the middle. I think this one's because it's got the curry flavors in there as well. It tends to stick a little bit more. Just starting to move now. As you can see, it's sliding nicely around the pan. But I'm gonna keep that on for a little bit longer because it's still, although it's moving, it still doesn't feel like it's what I call the scratching of the pan. You know that noise that you get, that shh, shh, that kind of scratching noise at the bottom of the pan? wasn't quite scratchy enough now that's almost there that we can just give it a flick and turn that one over and as you can see perfect shape perfect size we just flatten that one down into the pan to speed that one up but the the smell of these you'll find when you're cooking these they're so nice all the different recipes and different flavors that you can put into something so simple two ingredients lentils water ratio one part lentil two part water add your different flavors to it if you're putting the juices in there then you know for your pancakes reduce that little bit of water down because it just takes longer 
to cook them into the pan. And I don't know about you, but if I get a taste for food, I just want to eat the food. And like I say, once they're done, you can freeze these down and put them in the microwave whenever you need them and you've got a whole batch ready to go. Let's give this one a little test and see how good this one is. It's almost coming away from the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna leave that for another 10 or 15 seconds. It's looking good. It's when you do this as well, for something so simple, just lentils and water, the in other ingredients you can put into it is so nice. There's another couple still coming up as well. There's two more things that I wanna show you with exactly the same recipe. It's just lentils and water, but I'm waiting for this one to come out because this is the one, I don't know about you, but when I'm having a curry, because I do a lot, gel phrase is probably one of my favorite ones. I always have a naan bread on the side that is really delicious look at that and that is your perfect if you take a look at that how perfect does that look and that once it's cooled down slightly well, that will be your perfect naan bread so we'll leave that one aside have a bit of a clean up again we come back I'm going to show you something a little bit different to do with the same recipe so back again in a second okay so now we've got three recipes done already we're using the same mix again we're going to use the lentils and water this time what we're going to do i've got some pecorino cheese and so you know how much i'm actually going to use purely for those of you that are with weight watchers as well if you want to do your counting on this with pecorino cheese it's 14 points per 100 grams so for me i want three points i've got 22 grams of pecorino cheese just to give this one a bit of a cheesy taste so exactly the same process as we've done before and that's that one all blended up again we take the lid off as per usual take the blade out so that we can use the mixture but what we're going to do this time, whereas before we've had the portable pa portable cooker, we've had the pan on, this time we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be using a flan tray. Now, if you were to pour this directly in, you need to grease it up as well. So a little trick if you're going to be doing this one, because what we're going to make in this, I know you're probably curious already, what's he going to do, what's he going to do? This one, size-wise, you can probably figure out what it is. It's going to be a pizza base. Now, you're going to need some parchment paper. The reason I do this, it does get quite sticky. Sometimes it doesn't cook enough underneath. I've tried this different ways. I've tried it directly in the pan. I used to use this other kind of pan, the large ones. I used to use those before and just let it all set and then get a, a round tray, the back end of one of these, cut it around the outside and all the bits I could just eat as little nibbles. But having moved on a bit further, I'm now just going to put parchment paper in this and I know you're thinking, how am I going to get this round? Well, for those of you who have never tried this before, and I've seen a lot of people, and people have said, how do you get that round shape? Parchment paper is probably the easiest thing to cut circular. Fold it in half one way. Fold it in half the other way. And then turn it into a diamond. And then turn it into a diamond again. So you end up with this small little package. Turn the item over, the round shape thing that you need. Take a pair of scissors, that's all you're gonna need for this. Line it up to the middle. Now, if you wanted this to fit within, you, then you would cut it right to the edge of the base. Because for this one, I want a bit of an upstand to accommodate for the excess liquid going up the sides and not stick as well. I'm just gonna cut this slightly wider. So if I go wider on the side, we can discard that last piece and now you'll see we've got a perfect circular piece of parchment paper. When we put it inside though, as we can see, it's a little bit too much on the big side. You can see from the inside, it's a little bit too big. So all we do is roughly line up where we want to go and crease it to the inside. A little bit too big that way, so let's re-crease again. And this part is just about holding it still in the middle and all we're doing is creasing the inside so we get the shape, but it's not gonna stay. Some people say you haven't got to cut them. I still get the scissors just so that it will do properly and just do about four or five little cuts on the edges. So then when you've got that upstand, when you put that inside, the upstands stay absolutely perfect. So recrease again, stick it in the bottom, and then all we're gonna do with the liquid is pour it and we know when we're almost done because as you can see it's starting to swell out from the bottom already once it almost gets to the point when it's touching the sides that's when we know we've got enough 
and that is probably going to be just about enough and that will leave me a bit more mixture so if I put that to one side what I'm going to do is two recipes in one here I'm going to use the same mixture and just tip this straight onto a non-stick pan and you're probably thinking why and at this point I'm not going to tell you I'm going to keep this one a secret until it comes out of the oven as you can see hardly any waste you can actually use a swill of water before you put pour this in and reduce it right down but we want to use as much of this liquid as we can this one we're just going to shake this one open let it open up a bit more until it's spread basically as far as it can possibly spread as you can see that is a nice thin base and all I'm going to do now is put these two we've got the pizza base in there as you can see it's a nice shape that will eventually settle itself down once it's in the oven and we've got a really thin one here so in the oven I'm going to bake these for about 25 minutes if it's an electric oven I put mine on 180 uh, that's in centigrade I'm not too sure what it is in Fahrenheit gas mark usually about gas mark 5 and we keep them in there for 25 slashed almost 30 minutes it's a case of just watching them at 25 minutes sometimes they're done sometimes I can't understand it it does need that little bit more so let me put these in the oven and we'll be right back right now that these are out of the oven I've left them to cool down for about five minutes so it's not too hot to touch as you can see there's your pizza base it's still within the parchment paper and as you can see it comes away nice clean tray slightly moist underneath and then if we just pop this on the plate removing all of the paper this is the good bit as you can see we've now got an absolutely beautiful pizza base and the good thing is if you're trying to lose weight whether you're with Weight Watchers or not virtually every piece of base that you've got will always be some kind of dough made with flour this one with lentils if you're with Weight Watchers you have now got a zero lentil base but because we've added parmesan cheese or sorry pecorino cheese for the flavor i've added three points now a normal 120 gram flour base of the other one if you look at my pepperoni video that i did before there's the link for that one it shows you the base using 120 grams of flour which equals 12 points this one is even lower because it's only three points once you do this one i always bake mine with the hard part to the bottom when i'm doing it and then i dress the top that's the pizza base let's move that to one side remember the leftovers that we had we put it onto this tray and we just bake this in the same oven i'll put this on the bottom as you can see it's loose already because it's a non-stick pan but listen to this let's snap a it's almost like a crisp and taste wise mm. Mm, that is just like a really nice crisp there's no oil there's no fattening agent if you're with Weight Watchers and you're not going to use the lentil and water mix for anything else make some of these I mean look at the size of that you can probably make yourself almost a packet of crisp just doing this and they they're lovely and crispy I've done this quite a few times this one's just got the cheese flavor in if you like cheese and onion crisps put a couple of spring onions in there or slice a few strands of onion in with the mixture when you get your mix and you're blending it all up just put your cheese and onion in together and make some of these they do take a while 25 minutes per tray so you need about three or four four of these trays put them in the oven together 25 minutes and as you can hear nice crisps if you want tomato ketchup flavored ones i've put some of those a couple of spoonfuls in that worked out the weight ratio for the points and done exactly the same again one of my favorite ones that i love doing with this is marmite i know it's a, a love or hate substance but if you like marmite flavored crisps just put some into the blender mix it all up like this and bake those the taste of those i have those probably three times a week they're really 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 yummy so as you can see recipes that we've done we've got garlic bread pancakes naan bread beautiful pizza base and we've even made some crisps and what have we done we've taken some lentils soaked them in water put them through a blender and to change the flavors we just added different ingredients things could not be simpler guys hopefully you've enjoyed this video i've had great fun making this for you guys again 
Have a look at some of the other videos as well. Like I said, the pizza recipe, that one's up there. You've got the other substances you can use, the mixed spice blend. If you didn't know what was in the mixed spice blend, again, there's another link for those. I'll put those at the end of the video as well so you can follow on to those. If you like what you've seen, you know where that subscribe button is. Please head on the subscribe. If you don't want to miss other recipes, the bell button down there as well, and give it a thumbs up and like. Give these a try, and once you've tried it, leave me some comments. Do love to read your comments. Until we do it again, have yourselves a great week and we catch on the flip side of the next video. Till then, bye.